This is Foxy Production, and it's one of my favorite galleries in Chinatown. I always visit it when I'm walking up to the Lower East Side. And this is a group show called Figura that's on view until December 20th. The theme of the exhibition is how the figure functions in art. And figuratism is one of my absolute favorite types of art, whether it's abstract figuratism or beyond. And there's two artists in the show that really stand out to me, and that's Sojourner Truth Parsons. I've always loved her works. They carry so much drama, but also intimacy at the same time. And then another artist that really stood out to me in the show was were the works of Adele Weber. And she has more of a graphic sort of pop aesthetic. But I love how her works speak to the contrast and the contradictions of the American experience. There's a familiarity amongst her works that really just draw you in. So this is Downs and Ross, which is also located on the second floor of a building in Chinatown. And this is a great gallery to go to if you just want to explore art and kind of have some privacy. There's never anyone in here. I've never actually spoken to anyone in the gallery when I come in. And it's just a really peaceful experience. And this artist, uh, I had never heard of her. She's Danny Letter, and she is from Germany, but she lives and works in New York. And she has a really impressive background. She actually has a PhD in psychology, um, and she incorporates that. As you look closer into a lot of this work, you can really see references to various aspects of psychology as far as like why we crave the things that we do, how we respond to cravings. And I love the mystery sort of in this exhibit. The press release actually was only a poem. And so you're kind of left to discover it for yourself and figure out what it means. But what I can tell is she's really looking into the human psyche and, and kind of questioning why we think and do what we do here. exhibit by Emma Coleman at Jack Hanley Gallery. Like so many artists, you know, over the last six to eight months, it's really changed from its initial vision that she had, which was supposed to be on view in April, to what we're seeing now. When Emma was in quarantine, she was thinking a lot about, you know, the purpose of her art and what she wanted the show to be like for the viewers. And after everything we've been through this year, she really just wanted it to be a place of peace, particularly for New York viewers to come in and just feel a little bit of solace because we haven't really had any of that this year, uh, to be honest. And so she added these beautifully carved benches that she created as well as this ambiance soundtrack, which was created by her friend and fellow artist, Sean Durham. And it's honestly just the perfect companion to her ink and watercolor works and it really allows the viewer to sit there and fully absorb and take in. And you don't just feel a physical piece when viewing these works, you feel an emotional and cognitive piece as well. And this is done on purpose through the characters that she creates in her works. They're meant to be very neutral and non-threatening and, and non-specific to a gender or sex.
This exhibit at Magenta Plains Gallery in the Lower East Side is titled Total Running Time. And the artist uses light and video projections, as you saw down in the basement, as well as up here, to represent the slippage in memory and language, and particularly when it comes to race and visibility. And Huffman is not only an artist, but a poet, and he treats his artworks very similar to poetry, but instead of using words, he uses fragments from television broadcasts and other various video clips, as well as um, color and light. And together, the composition reads visually like a poem would. This exhibit, which is on the ground floor of Gallery Periton in the Lower East Side, is an homage to the artist Julio Le Parc, who has been a painter for quite a long time. And this exhibit really shows the evolution of his work, starting from the 1966 Venice Biennial, where he received the Grand Prix in painting, all the way up until now, where he's been experimenting with these mobiles and their how they reflect you know and catch lights in a similar way to his his rainbow works but i think the most interesting thing about this exhibit is it's such a good example of how important it is for an artist to evolve and to keep pushing their work over time while still maintaining the core of their identity Otani Workshop's exhibit is on the third floor of Periton, and it might sound like this is a collective or a group of artists, but Otani Workshop is actually uh, one individual, a Japanese artist, and he named himself Workshop because of, in Japan, when you're in elementary school, the art classes that you take are called workshops, and he loved the casual, childlike sort of nature of that verbiage, and so that's the name that he works under. And in general, you'll see that childlike theme throughout his work. He is an incredible sculptor, mostly working with clay, but you'll also see he's branched out into paintings and these beautiful large-scale paintings, a lot of them done on driftwood, and he's bringing in the theme of Japanese animism or the concept that there is a spirit that lies within all things. And it's just so heartwarming and approachable. And that's exactly the kind of feeling that he wants to exude in his works. And it's very obvious. He doesn't want it to be just under that fine art category where the average person can't appreciate it. And you definitely feel that when experiencing this exhibit.